Hey there. In this video, we're going to be slimming down the neck of a Gibson SG Supreme bass. This is quite an unusual bass. I think there's only about 400 of them supposed to be out there. Uh, but this one, the only one's the neck slimming down a little bit because uh, it's a bit wide and it's quite fat as well. So we're going to be taking some from the width and also from the profile. Uh, so a word of warning for anyone attempting this, uh, do be careful of the truss rod. Uh, so we're going to be removing all the wood from the shoulders of the neck rather than the centre. Uh, because the truss rod is actually quite close to the back of the neck and if you carve into the truss rod when you're removing material uh, that's the end of the neck then at that point. Uh, the same goes also for if you have any reinforcement in the neck such as carbon fibre or steel running through the neck because these will typically be quite close to the back and actually in the profile of the neck so if you have this reinforcement in your neck uh, just don't attempt, attempt this at all because uh, there's a good chance you could end up carving into one. But with this one we're okay so you could go ahead, go ahead and we're going to have a look at the base now. So here's the base, this is a Gibson SG a supreme base and it's got a nice satin thin nitrocellulose finish on it and what we're doing today is we're going to be slimming down the thickness the width rather of the neck here at the nut and then tapering that down so it joins the original taper down here somewhere uh, this is a 41 millimeter nut and the customer likes a 38 or even a bit below width nut like a jazz base uh, whereas at the moment it's kind of in between a p base and a jazz base uh, so first we're going to sort the width out and then after that we're going to change the profile a bit also because the profile on this is it's fat uh, so we need to bring that down a bit because that's not what the customer likes and then afterwards we'll have to sort the finish out and blend it into the old finish uh, it shouldn't be too bad because this is a uh, just a clear finish it's not like metallic or something which can be difficult uh, so we should be able to blend that in uh, without even knowing had been done. So the first job is going to be removing the nut uh, on a, a lot of makes of guitar. They don't actually put lacquer over the top of the nut so it's just a case of removing it and you can knock it out and it comes straight out but Gibson actually spray the lacquer on after the nut's gone in uh, so this is kind of being held in with lacquer also so if you knock this out it'll, take, it'll end up chipping around the edges here and on the sides. Uh, we're not too bothered about the sides because we're going to be putting new finish on it anyway but we don't want anything coming this way on the front of the headstock. Uh, because we're probably not going to end up having to refinish this area if we're lucky. And you can see there's a little bit of scuffing just from general use around the edge already. So we don't want that to get any worse. And I've, I've seen that there definitely is finish on this. It's not like they did it any differently. They did the same as all Gibsons and uh, where they've sprayed the lacquer afterwards. So to make sure we don't get any chipping, we need to score for the blade down all sides first. So down here you can see the bits of lacquer coming off there. And then here is also on the sides and I'm cutting just above uh, where the wood would be wood is uh, so you don't end up actually cutting into the wood which should be even worse than chip lacquer and once that's done we can then knock it out like any other nut it's always worth doing this if you don't know and you can't tell if there is lacquer on it just in case because it can be quite ugly Try and knock out a nut, and it's been lacquered in. You also want to score down this edge here where it joins the fretboard. So, ordinarily, what you do is you tap on this face here, and then you tap it back that way, and it would loosen the glue and it would knock out uh, or lift out, rather. Uh, but this one didn't want to go easy, so I've had to cut a slot directly down the middle. So, we'll have, we're going to build a new nut for this anyway, so it doesn't matter in this case. Uh, but it's a bit annoying when you have to do this when, you, when you'd like to reuse the nut. Uh, but so I've cut that right down. You can see pretty much almost through, but not. You don't want to go too far and go into the wood, obviously. So now we should be able to collapse this nut on it itself. So you can see now the major majority of it is collapsed in on itself, and I just have to knock these bits out now with the chisel. Uh, we haven't got any damage at all, so that's good. So they're just chipping it, kind of taking out in pieces like that now. I'm just using it as a wedge, kind of lightly leaping under and it'll pop out like that. So you can see how well it's glued in. I'm not sure what material this was, what they were using at the time. It's definitely not bone, uh, it's some kind of plastic or nylon. It's very tough anyway. So at last that's come out now and there's no damage anywhere on the finish. So we got there in the end, but much easier when they just knock out. So you can see I've Put masking tape down onto the fretboard just this makes an easier surface to draw onto and i've drawn up the taper onto the neck 
ends up joining about at the 12 foot down there, back with the original taper. Um, so I'm just going to use a Shinto Wesp. I've already started on this side. Just here you can see it's a bit less on that side than those on here. Uh, and I'm just going to use that first and get just a square edge along the edge. And then I'm going to round it off afterwards and make it a bit of a new profile for the neck also. So that's the base side done now, mm -hmm. and you can see if I put a straight edge along here, there's no gaps underneath, running all the way along as it should. And if I do a longer straight edge, it's the same, all the way down to the last foot. Yeah, so obviously that's left quite a big flat on that side now, so it's going to have to be blended in later. Uh, you can see I was also using the Dremel on this here to blend in on the curve here. Uh, so now we're just going to do exactly the same on the other side, and then we can give it its profile back afterwards. We'll also need to bevel the frets as well, because I've taken off that bevel on the edge, a bit of square. So there we go, that side's done now, and you can see it's nice and straight all the way along. No humps or bumps or anything, or dips. And that's what the frets now look like. You can see they're missing their bevel on this first one, and then as you go down, they start to come back a bit. And uh, you can see I've got an equal gap on either side of the inlays. So it shows I've taken it off in an equal amount. And so now we're going to have to bevel these frets again. And we can also shape the profile properly on the back. Because I'll show you it now. So you can see this has created these flats on the edge. So what we'll do is start maybe a bit higher up than that. And then taper this down to there so we'll end up with more of a slope going down this way rather than such a round fat shape like it was before it's made it a bit better already just by having the less width there it doesn't feel quite so big uh, so but by the time we change the profile a bit by just blending these in it should feel even better so i've just applied this tape to where i would like to stop the kind of facet and i'm going to just use a coarse file to blend this down to that sort of this sort of angle so i want to connect this to the edge of the fretboard really So that's that one side done now up to the where the tape was. So next I'll have to smooth this slight ridge there now you can just feel it. So next I'll smooth this out and that should be that should be part of the final shape then. And then I've got to do the same to the other side. So here's the finished profile now. I'm happy with how it's come out. Uh, it's very softly, it's not, not too like kind of pointy, but it's like so much less material there now, it feels much more comfortable. Uh, for people who like jazz necks anyway. Uh, so I've sanded the majority of the finish off. You can see I've left the middle alone as much as I can. That's because underneath this is obviously the truss rod. And if I put a magnet on here, you'll see that's there's not much wood in between that. So you don't want to remove any wood off directly behind the truss rod, so we're moving it from the sides instead. Uh, so that's always something to keep in mind. 
that the truss rod is in there. Uh, and obviously if you've got a neck with carbon reinforcement, you need to be very careful too. I probably wouldn't bother doing this at all because the carbon's not very far underneath the neck often. Um, but I'm sure this one didn't have any. So next up, I've got to work through the grades of sandpaper. I did all that with 120, so I'm 180 now. And basically anywhere that I've sanded or filed needs to be sanded with every grade. Still some finish to come off. I'll get the, the majority of this dark stuff off the middle. So where the darker, it's just where it sunk into the grain there. But as like I said, I was trying not to touch that too much. That's fine with the fine sandpaper. That's the profile now, all done and sanded and everything. Uh, so the next two jobs left over. Uh, the edge of these fretboard is now extremely sharp, not walled at all. So we need to round that off. And obviously the beveling, which I mentioned before on the frets. Uh, and then it'll be time to mask it off and spray. So for beveling the frets, I'm just doing it freehand rather than using one of the angled blocks. Uh, this is because it's going to be easier to blend it in with the old frets doing it this way. So it's, it's very accurate anyway. You just keep, keep your hand still and rest along the edge of the frets like this. And then I'm going to adjust as I go to make sure I'm matching the other side and the frets that we never touched. So I get more black to blend in and it looks like it's never been touched. So I'm just going to give the edge of the fretboard a bit of a round off, make it less sharp. So I'm just using a blade and scraping along like that. It wasn't that round in the first place, so I don't need to overdo it. So I'm going to just do a couple of passes with the blade and then I'll follow up with a bit of sandpaper to smooth it off. That's, now that's done, I can just uh, take care of the sharp corners on the frets. I'm just using a fret file here, which has got a safe edge on there. So this edge wides along the fret board and then you just slide down over and round. So you, the idea is you're trying to get these little bits just on the corner there. I've already done this one, but just on those corners there is where you're trying to get to. And obviously at the same time, you're taking care of this bit around here, which can also feel sharp. So there we go, that's the flex all done. Uh, so I'm gonna give them a polish afterwards, uh, after the base, base has actually been sprayed. Uh, but that's basically it now. All the woodwork kind of stuff's done. So you can see we've got a nice straight neck all the way down, no bumps or anything. All the bevels look correct. The map blend in with the other ones. And we've got no sharp edges and a nice smooth edge. So now I've messed off the whole body. I've used this paper uh, to stick as little tape to the body as I can. Uh, but anywhere there is tape, I've used this uh, extremely low tack stuff, which I know is safe with nitrocellulose so it won't pull anything off and it won't have any kind of reaction with the lacquer. And anywhere where old lacquer meets new lacquer, I've used this 3M tape to give a nice line as vinyl 3M tape. So I've used that on any edges where the two are going to meet. Uh, I've masked off the face of the headstock, so it's got the blue tape up around the very front here. Uh, but I've left the back clear. And this is because if I end up putting masking tape across here or even down here, you'll see where the two meet. And it's going to create more of a, uh, like an abrupt line. So it's going to be easier to actually just to blend this and spray as little on this as possible and then probably blend it up to about here and then that'll give it a more gradual effect rather than just a hard line of masking tape. Uh, so I'm going to spray as few coats as possible. It's probably going to be a couple of passes, that's it, because this is really thin stuff, thin lacquer here. Uh, so we don't want it to go too thick. So that's what I'm going to do now. Uh, another thing worth doing is blocking off these tuna holes. Because uh, no matter how well you mask off the other side, you always end up with some lacquer bleeding through. Uh, so I blocked these up with some masking tape, just teared up pieces, and then stuck a piece over the top to kind of seal it. Yeah, and you could also use uh, tissue or something like that just to block it and absorb any lacquer what's going down there. So I've now finished spraying the neck. Like I said, it was about three or four passes, not much. I was using a compressor and gum. But if you were using an aerosol, you might want to do a couple more passes if you're trying to do something similar. Um, and this is yet to be 
wet sanded or any kind of buffing at all. It won't take much, obviously, because it's only a setter. But you can see there's a little bit of texture still in it at the moment. But this is going to be polished off in a couple of weeks when the lacquer's hardened a bit. But there's very little to do anyway because it's only a satin finish. But you can see it all blends nicely. And you can't tell where the old lacquer meets the new lacquer, which is great. So it's been a few weeks now and I've just wet sanded this with 1500 grit paper. And that was all it needed. It didn't need anything more coarse to make it level. And then I just did a little bit of buffing afterwards just to get it to the white level to match it with the body. And it looks great, I think. Uh, you'd never really know now looking at it that it's had any work done to it. Uh, so it still looks like the original finish. Uh, blends in nicely. Has a really nice soft feel to it as well that you get from a satin finish. And we haven't sprayed so much lacquer that we filled in all the grain, which we obviously didn't want to do. So on the other side of the base, I polished up this fretboard because uh, this was quite dirty. It's looking much better now. It still needs oiling, which I'm going to do next. And then I'm, the, one of the final jobs before putting it together will be making a nut. Uh, I'm using bone from a blank. Uh, I do a video on this if you'd like to check that out because I'm not going to cover it in this video. Uh, so if you're interested in seeing how that's done, check out my other video. Uh, but this one's obviously much too big at the moment. Uh, so this needs shaping down. And then we can get strings on it again. So I made a new nut for it now. Um, the string slots aren't quite to depth yet. I'll do that once the strings are on. That'll be part of the final setup. Uh, but they are there. A bit difficult to see because of the camera angle and the shininess of the nut. It's all been polished up. And I've also oiled the fretboard here. And you can see the colours come out a lot better on that. It was really dry. Um, so next up, I can put the hardware back on and then finally get the strings on. And that's this one done. And there we go, all back together again. Uh, so now the only way to really test for su success and see how comfy the neck is, is to give it a play test, as I'm sure you'll agree. So that's what we're going to do now. very much for watching uh, if you'd like to see more content like this please subscribe to stay up to date with all the latest videos and thanks again for watching and i'll see you soon